informed by email that I'm supposed to speak on Jiva Goswami today in Jagadish Pandit. That's what is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I will go to Shri Prabhupada. So, um, yes, Maharaj, but uh, you know, if you want to the type verses, that would be nice. The verses I gave you before. Yeah, we can do the verses and then you want me to speak on Jiva Goswami or just speak on the verses? Uh, Jiva Goswami too. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, so put up the verses. <laughs> Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Umni Tamena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shumakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishri Sasunyavari Pastyatyare Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubis Jakri Pasindu Pa Eva Chapati Tanam Bhagare Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Purutananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, so this verse is from the uh, 31st chapter of the fourth canto, text 21. And then we're supposed to do the second next verse, 22 also. Napachiti kumastinam saiyam areranat mam dana priya rasa gya shuta dana kula kamanam madir ye vidanti par papam akinchaneshu satsu. Translation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes very dear to the devotees. Uh, I can't see those two words after the words devotees. Lower it down a little bit. Lower, lower the text down. Okay. The Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes very dear to those devotees who have no material possessions, but are fully happy in possessing the devotional service of the Lord. Indeed, the Lord relishes the devotional activities of such devotees. Those who are puffed up with material education, wealth, aristocracy, and fruit of activities are very proud of possessing material things, but they often deride the devotees. Even if such people offer the Lord worship, the Lord never accepts them. Purpur. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is depending on his devotees. He does not even accept the offerings of those who are not his devotees. A foiled devotee is one who feels he does not possess anything material. A devotee is always happy in possessing the devotional service of the Lord. Devotees may sometimes appear materially poor, but because they are spiritually advanced and are rich, they are most dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such devotees are free from attachment to family, society, friendship, children, and so on. They abandon affection for the, all these material possessions, are always happy in possessing the shelter of the Lord and Lord's feet. The Supreme Personality of Godhead understands the position of his devotee. Even if a devotee derives a pure devotee, he is never recognized by the personality of Godhead. In other words, the Supreme Lord never excuses one who offends a pure devotee. There are many examples of this in history. The great mystic Durvasamuni offended Maharaj Amarish. Durvasa was chastised by the Sudarshan Chakra, even though he, would, he approached the Supreme Lord, he was never excused. Those on the path of liberation should be very careful not to offend a pure devotee. Okay, so we want to do you want to do the next verse too. Sriyam Manu Charitim Artinas Cha Dipatapatim Vibudam Sayat Svapurnaha 
Nija with the Varga Tantra, Katam Mamun Udris Rijet, Umam Kritam Yaha. Translation Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead is self sufficient, he becomes dependent on his devotees. He does not care for the goddess of fortune, nor for the kings and demigods who are favors of the goddess of fortune. Whereas that person was actually grateful and would not worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> My voice is going to fall out if I keep reading. So somebody else read the purport, please. Hare Krishna, yes, I, can, I will read it. My voices cannot carry through a whole hour of continual mm -hmm. reading and talking. Okay, Maharaj. Hare mm -hmm. Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. So the purport by Srila Prabhupada. Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is worshipped by all materialistic men, including big kings and demigods in heaven. Lakshmi, however, is always after the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even though he does not require her service. Brahma Samhita says that the Lord is worshipped by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune, but the Supreme Lord does not require service from any of them, because if, if he so desires, he can produce millions of goddesses of fortune through his spiritual energy, the pleasure potency. This very personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy, becomes dependent on the devotees. How fortunate, then, is a devotee who is thus favored by the personality of Godhead? What ungrateful devotee will not worship the Lord and enter into his devotional service? Actually, a devotee cannot forget his obligation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even for a single moment. Srila Vishwanatha Chakravati Thakur says that both the Supreme Lord and his devotee are rasa full of transcendental humor. The mutual attachment between the Supreme Lord and his devotee is never to be considered material. It always exists as a transcendental fact. There are eight types of transcendental ec ecstasy known as bhava, anubhava, staya bhava, and so on. And these are discussed in the nectar of devotion. Those who are unaware of the position of the living entity and the Supreme Person Krishna think that the mutual attachment between the Lord and his devotees is a creation of the material energy. Factually, such attachment is natural both for the Supreme Lord and for the devotee, and it cannot be accepted as material. So in both these verses, we find the, the glories of devotional service. Devotional service is mentioned throughout the Shastras as not a feature of any, anything of this material world. Devotional service is part of the internal energy of the Supreme Lord, known as Ladini Shakti, or his pleasure potency of the Lord, personified as Srimati Radharani. <laughs> Therefore, devotional service is always completely transcendental. When we speak of devotional service, we have to indicate that devotional service means pure devotional service. Mixed devotional service is giving a qualitative statement in order to give an indication of uh, the mood of devotional service mixed with something from the three modes of material nature, either goodness, passion, or ignorance, or a combination of all three. But real devotional service is Savai Pum Sampado Dharma, Uto Bhakti Ahok Sajay, Hoituki Apriyata, Yayatma Suprasiditi. It's not. It's eternal, it's transcendental, it is not at all material. It manifests itself in the hearts of the pure devotees who qualify themselves by their devotion to the Lord. And they present that devotional service by, given by the Lord to the, the world in general to accept as the means for perfection of life. Um, 
in both of these verses, the glories of devotional service are compared to things in this material world. And the greatest things in this material world, wealth, aristocracy, prestige, uh, material possessions, and maybe material positions are insignificant because all these things are temporary and flickering and they come and they go. One who is in devotional service is not attracted to these things because they know they're all temporary and they cannot satisfy the heart. Although those who have a poor fund of knowledge, and those who are not educated, consider the, uh, the attainment of these things as success in life. But any, anybody, anyone who has a good sense of knowledge that is called, um, um, let's see, what's the word? Um, medasa, medasa means intelligence and swa medasa or sumedasa means, uh, it means good intelligence. Anyone with sumedasa can understand that whatever one achieves material is, has a built-in flaw of bringing suffering at the same time. And even though, even if it gives some pleasure or some relief, it is temporary and is destroyed in due course of time. So anyone, therefore, intelligence is indicated by one who doesn't seek things that are temporary and miserable by nature, even though they look good from the external environment. So one who seeks out devotional service is considered glorious. And pure devotional service can capture Krishna. Krishna is not captured. In fact, no one can catch Krishna. Krishna remains independent, but pure devotional service is greater than him. So you have you have bhakta, bhagavan, and bhakti. Bhagavan is the Lord. You have bhakta, which is the, the devotee, and bhakti is the process. So bhakti is powerful. Bhakti can capture bhagavan when, when bhakta has bhakti. Or real bhakti or full bhakti, devo, pure devotional service. And that's indicated by Srila Rupa Goswami in the definition that he presents in the uh, introduction to Bhakti Rasamrita to Sindhu, translated by Srila Prabhupada as the Nectar of Devotion. And in that he says, Ayabila Sita Sunya, Jnana Karma Naravata, Anukulena Krishna Silanam, Bhakti Uttamam. And he gives the definition of, of pure devotional service. It is um, free from any desires of fruit of gain. In other words, one doesn't perform devotional service to try to gain anything material, whether immediate or extended. Immediate means immediate uh, results on a material level. Extended means something in the future. And then also there are the jnanis and the yogis who like to speculate on spiritual topics within the shastras and present themselves as very knowledgeable and at the same time very detached from everything material. If any of these considerations enter into the process of bhakti, they pollute bhakti. So, uh, Anukulena Krishna Siddham Bhakti Uttamam means no karma or no gyan, no yoga. And it has to be for Krishna with a desire to please Krishna. And that is pure devotional service. So pure devotional service is in the hearts of the pure devotees. Therefore, in order to achieve it, one should seek out the shelter of a pure devotee, render service, uh, ask questions and uh, uh, become what we say, willing to carry out whatever instructions are given. Uh, that is called Pratipane, I'm sorry, Pratipante Prariprasine Yena and Sevaya. 
I mean, someone has to be humble, inquire, and be willing to render service. So this is where you find pure devotional service. It's locked into the hearts of the great souls, but they're willing to give it for those who are sincere. That's why the process of initiation or aspiring for initiation is the means to achieve this pure devotional service. So initiation means one's qualified to receive this great gift of bhakti. Uh, bhakti is a gift in the sense that it uh, is not easily attained by pious activities or good behavior, great intelligence, vast learning in various subject matters, even in scriptures. It's only, it's only attained by the mercy of Krishna's pure devotee who unlocks that treasure and plants it into the heart of the devotee at the process, during the process of initiation, the seed of devotion is given at that time. And the watering process is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and to render service to the Lord through by following very carefully the guidance of the Lord's pure devotee. So this is where you find devotional service. You can't buy it, you can't manufacture it. You can't, there's no way you can get it other than approaching one who has it. And therefore one who has it is very willing to give it because they also receive it by the grace of the Lord. And therefore they are qualified to give it and that is their great, that is their service to the Lord to inspire others in, in the process of pure devotional service. So comparatively speaking, everything in the material world, this is what these two verses really sum up, that uh, no matter what position you have in the world or what qualifications you have materially, it's all asara. Asara means useless. Uh, Shrama Evil Hikavalam, they can't save anyone because it's all ephemeral and temporary. We are eternal and we can never be happy with anything, fully happy with anything material. Although we try to satisfy the senses through various types of contact with the objects of the senses in the forms of the things that were mentioned in this verse, such as position, family members, wealth, um, good intelligence, good birth, all these things. They give some false sense of happiness. And uh, the real happiness is uh, Brahma Sokyam, uh, which is Anantam. When Rishabh Dev instructed his, his sons in the science of bhakti, he says, you know, Nayam deho deho bhaja nirloke kastan karma ariti vid bhujan jay. The po divyam putra katyena sadvam tasmad brahma sokam anantam. Brahma sokyam. Brahman sokyam or brahma sokyam means transcendental happiness and it's anantam, it is eternal. The beginning of the verse derides anyone who simply wants to work hard for material things, comparing them to no better to animals who eat uh, the, the refuge that people throw away. So um, to understand the glories of uh, devotional service, one has to approach Krishna's representative to get that mercy. But in and of itself, devotional service is rare in the beginning of nectar of devotion. The qualities, six characteristics, not qualities, six characteristics of devotional service is that one of them is it's rarely achieved. Many people take up devotional service. Very few can actually reach the goal of devotional service, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Manusanam sahasreshu kastid yatati siddhaye yatatam avisidhanam kastid manveti tattvataha. Many persons try spiritual life and some actually reach perfection, but those who actually reach perfection 
though very few, hardly any, knows Krishna in truth. But by the grace of the pure devotee spiritual master and by one's eagerness to achieve the lotus feet of the Lord in devotional service, it can be attained. And this is where Krishna is captured. Now, he is, he is Swarat. He is totally independent. God is not under anyone's control. Everyone is under his control. Anitya Nityanam Chaitanya Chaitananam Eku Bahudam Vidadati Kama. He is one. He maintains all the eternals. That's us. And he is no one is equal to, no one is greater than him, everyone is subordinate to him. But he becomes captured by the love of his devotee when that love becomes pure through worshiping his representative, the spiritual master, by following carefully the instructions given. And gradually one makes progress to the goal of life, which is love of God. And love of God attracts Krishna. This is the point that we should understand clearly that you can't give Krishna anything because everything belongs to him anyway. What we give to him in the way of offering things is simply an opportunity to, to serve. The objects are simply means by which we can offer something, but what are we actually offering our devotion? The object becomes a means for activity. And not, it's not so much the, uh, the principle of the activity is the, uh, the object. It's like you can give Krishna a, a million dollars, but in, if there's no bhakti, he's not interested. <laughs> but if you give Krishna a flower and there's love connected with that offering, then Krishna accepts. And then he blesses you with his mercy in different ways. And when, when that becomes concentrated, when we perform all activities in that way, then we actually can capture Krishna. Capture Krishna means he becomes available to his devotee. Just like we see the example of Arjun. Arjun had pure love for Krishna. And when Krishna said he wasn't going to fight, or take part in the battlefield of Kuru Shetra, in any capacity, he refused. He gave his armies to Duryodhana, and he said, uh, you can have me, Arjun, but I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm just on your side, that's all. And Arjun said, well, uh, how about driving my chariot? Because <laughs> if you're on my chariot, then I can fight with, you know, the way I should fight. So the Lord agreed to become the charioteer Arjuna because, um, because of Arjuna's pure devotion to Krishna. If a mixed devotee would have asked that, Krishna would have probably not considered that at all. But because Arjuna had pure devotion, he agreed. And he and when you look at him, you know, Arjun had to order Krishna, drive my chariot this way, move this way. You know, in other words, the charioteer becomes the um, servant of the person who is actually on the chariot who's doing the fighting. So Krishna became the, what we say, the willing servant by carrying out the orders of Arjuna by driving his chariot during the battle of Kurukshetra. So how much the Lord actually becomes the servant of his devotee is inconceivable. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in South India, he stopped in the Naranganath temple. And there was one Brahmin there who was given an instruction by his spiritual master to every day read Bhagavad Gita. And he was trying to read Bhagavad Gita, but he had a problem. He could not read. He was illiterate. And therefore, sometimes he would hold the book upside down. <laughs> he couldn't read at all. And some of the other Brahmins in the temples, they would sometimes chide him and make fun of him. And he would just ignore them. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he saw this Brahmin. And he asked him, what are you doing? The Brahmin could understand that this person is not making fun of me. He just wants to know. 
really explained. I, I have a, this is the instructions of my spiritual master to read every day Bhagavad Gita, but I, I can't read. I am illiterate. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was appreciating because he was seeing that this devotee was crying. He said, I can see you, you, you can't read, but you're crying. How is that? Well, when I see this picture here, he points to the picture of Arjuna and Krishna in the chariot and, and Krishna striving the chariot for Arjuna. I become so much overwhelmed with love just seeing how Krishna becomes the servant of his devotee that I become very emotional. So the Lord responded, yes, you have understood Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Although he couldn't read, he understood the, and the message of Bhagavad Gita. So devotional service is priceless. And therefore it says that if you get a chance to get it, don't waste time. Get it as soon as you can, because it is the treasure of all treasures. It's priceless and it, it transcends everything material. And it is, it becomes the heart of Krishna when one executes devotional service to please the Lord. And there's nothing greater than that. To become the servant of a big man in this world, people aspire for that. Let me become the servant of a, a king or a president or someone who is very famous. People aspire to that because it's a lot of prestige attached to that. And there's a lot of what we say gratuitousness. They receive so much. But who's that, sir, who's that person who all the great men serve? And that is the Supreme Lord. So he is the great, greatest of all persons. So to become the servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the greatest of all achievements. And so that service is available to everyone through the mercy of his representative, the Bodified Spiritual Master. So one should be eager to take shelter of a spiritual master, receive initiation, and actually execute the process accordingly. And in that way, one will understand the essence of Krishna's appearance and his characteristics, and that will qualify one to go back home, and back to the spiritual world. So these two verses are just illustrating the glories of devotional service over everything. Uh, Okay, so we'll stop there and then um, we'll go for some questions. And then after the questions, I'll speak a little bit about uh, Srila Jiva Goswami. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for uh, um, enlightening us about the devotion, pure devotional service. And um, uh, by giving the example of Arjuna, you show that how Krishna became the servant of. Uh, uh, Arjuna, so we should aspire for pure devotion service. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for uh, enlightening us. So yes, uh, Vivek Prabhu raised his hand. So I would request devotees, they can ask questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, my question is that when Krishna has mentioned in this verse that uh, he is very dear to those devotees who are not having any material possession, uh, it means that because we are having material possession, but we should not have any attachment and we should always feel that this is all belonging to Krishna and this is like we are just using this. Is that the understanding? Otherwise, <laughs> saying that he will yeah. not accept any worship. There's a word, a kinshita gochara. Kinshita gochara means without any material possessions. But what it actually means in terms of our practice of devotional service is given by Srila Rupa Goswami. Nirbande Krishna Sambande Yukta Bhairagya Uchchute. Um, pure devotional service, our devotional service means not to renounce everything 
But real renunciation is yukta vairagya, to use whatever Krishna provides in the service of Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. It's all you're doing is using what belongs to him anyway. Nothing belongs to us because we simply, we come, we come into this world and we acquire things in different ways. And then when we leave, everything stays here. <laughs> so when we come here, nothing is ours and we leave, nothing, we can't take anything with us. So we're using these things. So in other words, we're borrowing them from the Supreme Personality of God. And the Lord is merciful. He will allow us to use will to have what we need in order to keep body and soul together. But the real, the real understanding is you know, um, everything belongs to the Lord. And if you break it down into its essence, you'll see that everything comes from the Lord. Therefore, everything is created by the Lord. Everything is facilitated by the Lord. He says, Bhoktiyam, Bhoktaram, Yajya Tapasam. Sarva Lokshan Maheshwaram Suhidam Sarva Bhutanam Shantamam Yantam Krishnati. I am the proprietor of all planets and demigods. I am the controller of all, <laughs> of all everything. No, he is the he is Bhokta, he is the enjoyer, he is the controller, he is the source, he is the seed, he is everything. Everything comes from him. Everything is an expansion of his energy. We are also of the same nature. We are expansion of his energy also. So even our own bodies don't even belong to us. It's been given to us through the agency of, you know, our material mother and father. But ultimately, these bodies are made of the ingredients produced by Krishna. So nothing belongs to us. Uh, only the only thing you can possess actually is the uh, is the the right to serve the Lord. This is our situation in this material world. So Rupa Goswami gives the formula. Formula, real renunciation is not to give up things. That's a form of renunciation, but that's partial renunciation. In some cases, some things must be given up completely. But in essence, and this is what we're talking about, the principle of life means to see whatever you have or whatever you are attained and use it for the service of the Lord. And that way there's no loss and gain because if it belongs to Krishna, if you lose it, it's not yours. And if you gain something, it's not yours. So you're the proprietor, you're the caretaker. It's like if you get a job, say you're a security guard in a factory. The factory is not, doesn't, you're not owning, you don't own the factory, but you're the security guard. You're making sure everything is kept secure. Things are not stolen or lost. And they, the doors are locked. Every, now, in other words, you have a job to take care of the building, but it doesn't belong to you. A better example is a, is a teller in a bank who is taking in so much money and then he's also giving back money to whoever approaches him. But none of the money belongs to him. So these are our positions in this world. You know, nothing belongs to us. But that's nice because there's no anxiety. Therefore, there's no loss and there's no gain. Gaining is something spiritual and losing is actually losing the false ego that I have the, that I actually possess something. The only thing we have to lose is our false ego and that idea that I am the controller, I am the proprietor. That's the only thing we have to give up really. So whatever you have, manaso deho geho, yo kichu mor arpit lum tu apade nandikishor. Beautiful prayer by Bhakti Vinod Tagore. He says, my, my home, my wife, my possessions, everything, my very body, nandikishor, it belongs to you. 
manaso deho geho yo kitchen mora arpilun arpade nandikishur. This is Bengali, but it illustrates the position of one who is in knowledge. Nothing belongs to us. We take care of it like it belongs to us, because if you're taking care of something that is of the property of someone who's dear to you, you take care of it as if it was your own property. You don't misuse it, you don't mistreat it, you don't abuse it, you don't neglect it, you don't keep it unclean. Because that person who owns it is very dear to you, you, you do the best to make sure everything is kept nicely and used in the right way. So when we do that, people from the outside might think, oh, well, these, are, these belong to you, therefore you're so very careful. No, nothing belongs to us, but we have been given these these items, whatever they are, and relationships, whatever they are, in order to serve the Lord through these various elements. And that's the freedom, that's the position of freedom. You see, when the materialists are dying, they're always worried about, well, what is my money going to be used for? What will happen to my family? What will happen to this? What will happen to that? You know, they're in so much anxiety about leaving the world. They're still trying to make plans to see what happens to all the things that they have in their possession under their control. So they're in anxiety. Thank you, Maharaj. So useful and so nice instructions. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, we have to practice that. If you practice it, it becomes a reality. Shower your blessings, Maharaj. Like, yes, you can really follow this path. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, my question is like during initiation, you said um, the spiritual master unlocks the pure devotional service. Uh, so, and then we follow the instructions, then we can develop the pure devotional service. So, the spiritual master instruction says, serve the local temple, you know, Maharaj, like just wherever you are, just serve the local temple and follow the authority like that. So we start following the instructions, but then our service becomes very mechanical during the process in the due course of time, um, where we really, you know, have that uh, motivation to develop pure devotional service and it becomes very mechanical. Okay, I have to dress the deities, I'll dress the deities, but how do we keep that motivation to develop that pure devotional service that the gift that has been given by the spiritual master to, um, to, uh, I don't know how to put the words, but just to develop that uh, and then to hold on to that pure devotional service that he unlocked in our hearts. Mm. Well, devotional service is nothing of this material world. And the mechanical terminology that we apply to wrong devotional service is that we're not seeing the, the connection between the activities and the person then it becomes mechanical. We see the activities either as something that we have to do or something for our benefit. When we don't see our benefit in it or we just get routine in doing the activities, forgetting about who it's for, then these, this consciousness arises. So we can relish everything when we see it in connection to the to the, to the person we're offering it to. This is for Krishna. This is for my spiritual master. This is for the devotees in the temple. So we're doing it as a service and we want to please these personalities who are serving. Who are serving. And therefore we do it in the best possible way. We, 
you know, when we're at home, we have this way we, well, my husband, he, he's coming home, so let me make something that may, will be pleasing to him when he comes. I take care of the children to make sure they don't get sick, make sure they do everything that they're supposed to do. So um, we can get mechanical there too, but generally because we're more connected with the family members, we have a tendency to become less mechanical. When we come to the temple, we can't see the connection between what we're doing and the pleasure of the Lord. So that has to be a conscious, you know, factor in everything we do that this is for Krishna. So let me do it in the best possible way with the greatest amount of tension, uh, attention. Thank if you, you do Anna. if you do everything in that way and everything is nice well you know what you know what happens you know what starts to destroy this or makes things mechanical if we have a tendency to try to do too much and then we start squeezing things in and and the time frame becomes our manager as as opposed to the mood of devotion when that happens, then uh, we just want well, we go from one activity to another just to get it done. And then we lose the mood that we're doing it in. So whether you're sweeping the floor, sweep it in the best possible way. Whether you're addressing the deities, put your complete attention and your creativity into the, into the activity knowing this, this will please Krishna or knowing that this is for the pleasure of Krishna. Devotees don't want to get mechanical, but one of the features that, that arises is that we try to do too much. When we try to do too much, we have a tendency to rush through things in order to get everything done. And then we start to lose that mood. You can do a lot, but you can have to be able to do everything nicely. On the local level, sometimes everything is seen like, well, somehow or other, get the service done. But on the spiritual level, it's about offering our devotion to Krishna. Sometimes the, the temple facilities are more or less organized in a way to just to facilitate getting everything done. And that shouldn't be the mood. It should be, done, it should be there to do everything nicely. With attention and with, with as much devotion as we can, you know, acquiesce. Thank you so much, Maharaj. If you practice that in everything you do, then when you do the really important services, such as dressing the deity or chanting your rounds, then you'll see the difference. When you apply this attention and care to everything, then you'll see how it impacts everything you do. Even the smallest things become uh, satisfying when they were the when they're done with in that mood. Yeah, I think it's a lot of practice, Mara. <laughs> because especially when the festivals comes in the temple, it's like so many services. We're running from one service to another, and we really um, at least so, I really while you're running, start just chant Hare Krishna while you're running. <laughs> <laughs> that way you'll remember Krishna. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maris. Keep asking questions. I'll be right back.
Okay, so we talk about Jiva Goswami now. Okay. Uh, sorry, Mara, there is one question on the chat. So, okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, one devotee is asking, Maharaj, is it possible that person develops devotion to Krishna, even pure devotion without initiation? If maybe person was already a devotee in a previous life and was already initiated, having the seed of devotion life? Um, it's possible, but it's very rare, rarely achieved, especially in Kali Yuga, because the opportunity to get distracted is very, very broad. Um, you can make you make advancement even when you're not initiated, but Rupa Goswami outlines the process, Adao Strata Sadhu Sangha Bhajana Kriya and Arta Nivritti. So in the third stage, Bhajana Kriya means taking shelter of the Lord's pure devotee. So Rupa Goswami explains that this is the process. But in some very, very and I say very, very rare cases, it's possible. But if you think you're on that level, you may, you may be fooling yourself. And there's, there's what is called um, Kripa Siddha. That means becoming perfect without going through the process. But that's rare. Very rare. I knew that, you know, we shouldn't think we're on that level. We do, we find, we might find ourselves, you know, after some time giving up devotional service altogether. <laughs> because it's all based on receiving the mercy. And mercy comes through the mercy carriers. There's Krishna's mercy and then there's Guru's mercy. Guru's mercy is Krishna's mercy with an added element of his own mercy. So Guru's mercy is greater than Krishna's mercy because it includes Krishna's mercy along with his own added mercy. Anyway, why wouldn't, why would one be averse to getting into it, taking shelter of Krishna's representative? It's like being averse to, you know, having a well-wishing friend. But the mind sometimes tells us, oh, well, you can do it on your own. So that's just the mind. No one should try that. It's not recommended. Therefore, we have to follow Rupa Goswami's process. Bhajana Kriya. Which leads to an Arta Nivritti, and then Dhanishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, and Bhava. Okay, so Siddha Rupa goes Jiva Goswami. Is today his his appearance day or disappearance day? I'm not sure. It is disappearance day, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, I'll say a few words about Jiva Goswami because he's one of the greatest, is the greatest of all Vedic scholars in the history of Vedic scholars. In fact, there are statements that no one is as, as, as great in scholarly understanding of scripture and along with devotional uh, credits as Jiva Goswami. He wrote 400,000 verses and 25 main books 
And some of his outstanding books are Gopal Champu, which is all of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Just like we read the Srimad Bhagavatam, he's delineated these same pastimes with a lot extra elements of nectar and detail. And he's also added a few extra topics at the end where the entire, where Krishna returns to Vrindavan, stays in Vrindavan, and then uh, is worshipped by all of the residents of Vrindavan. He gets married to Srimati Radharani and all the gopis. And then it all ends where everybody go back, everyone goes back to the spiritual world. These are uh, some added pastimes, which are also in the Shastras that Jiva Goswami has presented in Gopal Champu. On a personal note, I just finished reading about maybe a month ago, Gopal Champu. It took me a couple months to read it. And uh, uh, it became the excitement of my day. I would look forward to, uh, to my reading time and I would just simply find that this I was getting no greater happiness than other than reading this Gopal Champa. It's one of the most amazing presentations and how it's done. The, the unfolding of the storyline is interesting. I won't go into that so much how it unfolds, but Jiva Goswami does it in such an interesting way to make it even more and more exciting in the reader, in the reader's mind. And of course, he's very famous for his Sandharvas, the Tattva Sandharva, Bhakti Sandharva, Preeti Sandharva. Um, what are the other Sandharvas? Let me see if I can remember some of the other ones. Krishna Sandharva, Paramatma Sandharva, um, Preeti Sandharva, and the Kramya Sandharva. These are, there were six the Sandharvas plus the Kramya Sandharva, which is a Dexter Sandharva. Uh, these are really philosophical explanations of all the Vedic knowledge, uh, covering Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojana, along with very detailed explanations of Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Very philosophical. Uh, deep in transcendental knowledge um, requires some uh, determination to read it and to understand it. It's a little difficult for the average reader, but it's interesting. And uh, so he's also famous for that. He's written 25 major books and the Sandharvas are the outstanding ones. But some of the other uh, books that he has written. Bhagavad Sandharva, Satsandharva, yeah, we mentioned all these different ones. Uh, he was the one who inspired uh, Narottam Das Dakor, Srinivasachari, and Shamananda Pandit to. Uh, begin book distribution by, by giving them all the books of the Goswamis to have them copied and distributed. And um, there's even letters that we have today of Jiva Goswami's writing to these different devotees describing a little bit about pure devotional service and about book distribution. So just to I'll give you a little um, taste. I can read. He's, he's giving, he's responding to a letter by Srinivas Acharya. And this is, his, you can see how he writes. I, Sri Jiva, offer my obeisances at your lotus feet. Your feet are the source of our pleasure and auspiciousness. I always desire your welfare. I am fine here in Vrindavan. All the devotees of Vrindavan are well, with the exception of Srila Bhagavad Goswami, 
who recently departed from this world in full Krishna consciousness. Write me about the welfare of your associates, especially your son, Vrindavan Das. Is he studying? How are your two disciples, Vyas and Vasudev, doing? The editing of the four books about which you have inquired is almost finished. Because the monsoon has begun, I will not send them just now. Whenever the conditions are favorable, I will send the books to you. Please accept the well wishes of everyone here and convey my regards to everyone there. Also convey my blessings to King Virham Bir, your well-wisher, Sri Jiva. That's a letter from Jiva Goswami to Srinivas Acharya. Mm -hmm. So we have many more other letters. So that was one. So Jiva Goswami is, you know, he was the he was the nephew of Sanata and Rupa Goswami. His father was Anupam, also known as Vallabha. These three brothers were great devotees. Anupam was more of a devotee of uh, Lord Ramachandra. But Jiva Goswami mostly grew up under the tutelage of Rupa, Go, Rupa and Sanatan Goswami and became the best in all, writing so many books. He's also quite controversial, <laughs> as all great souls are. If a great soul is not controversial, he's not a great soul. You can't put a great soul in a particular category and try to understand them. They remain controversial, they remain hard to understand. Let me see if I can this and give you some more information on Jiva Goswami here. Um, I can read some of the books that he wrote. He meant he, he, a commentary on Gopal Tampa, Upanishads. He did a commentary on Brahma Samhita, commentary on his own work, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Commentary on his on Rupa Goswami's Udwala Nilamani, commentary on Yoga Saras Tavada, of course, the Sandharvas, Sri Radhika Karapada Stita Chinna, and many, many other books. As we say, he was the most profuse, the most educated, and it says that he was scholar exemplar. Susila Pandidat Sriman Jiva Sri Vallabhat Macha. According to the Gaudiya Vaishnava of Vidaya Jiva, oh, let me see what I said here. they said that he was a scholar of exemplary character. He, in his Siddha Deva, his, his pure spiritual essence, he is known as Vilas Manjari, who was an associate of uh, uh, the gopis in Sri Vrindavindam. And Lord Chaitanya blessed Jiva Goswami when he came to Ramakali. Says he, he grew up in Ramakali. And when Lord Chaitanya visited there, Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami met him there. And little Balava was just a little boy. I think he was about four years old. And Lord Chaitanya gave him his blessings at that age. And of course, later on, um, he became the famous Jiva Goswami. So this is a little bit about Jiva Goswami. Uh, there's much more. There's a whole lifetime of activities that are available in different writings throughout the uh, Gaudiya Vaishnav literatures. One day Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago, Shri Jiva Gopal Go. Six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Jiva Goswami established the Radha Damodar temple. And each of the Goswamis are noted, aside from uh, uh, not all of them, 
Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, and Jiva Goswami established a particular temple of the, door, the deities in Vrindavan. And uh, as we mentioned, there was no scholar ever, and nor will there ever be a scholar like Jiva Goswami. So those of you who are interested in studying deeply the philosophy of Gaudiya, Gaudiya, trend, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, along with the transcendent nature of the Vedas, can um, take up reading and studying Jiva Goswami's books. And uh, no doubt you'll learn so much from Jiva Goswami. Okay, so any concluding statements? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, because you mentioned Gopal Trampu and that beautiful section at the end that talks about the marriage of Radha and Madhava, I was just wondering, how are we to understand that? Because, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you have to read it. <laughs> well, no, what I'm asking is because I've always um, heard in classes that um, Krishna and and uh, and Radharani never married. So how? Well, how what, what, yeah, throughout their pastimes, it was always Swakya Ras, the Parakya Ras. Parakya Ras is you know, lawless love, and Swakya Ras is marriage. But the, the understanding is all the gopis belong to Krishna. <laughs> Although this is, this is nicely illustrated through the, through, the, through the work. You have to read it yourself. I don't think I'm qualified to explain it in detail without leaving it a lot of the essential points out. So I would suggest you just read Gopal. Have you read it, Gopal Chapter? Well, you got it right there. Have you started it? Yes, I was just looking at it yesterday and I was reading that section, the marriage. And I, again, I was just kind of curious because I had always heard that they never married. So, but it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. Did you, did you start from the beginning? I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the whole thing culminates in these later pastimes. Um, By reading it from the beginning, it all makes sense. Okay, so I'll start. Because there's a, there is a storyline that is connected with that, that, that last part that makes it all clear. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so I'll start at the beginning. I'll start today. Oh, it's great. It's you. If you can get through the first chapter, first chapter is a little hard to get through because the way he writes, but he, he write, it's actually poetry. Mm -hmm. He actually writes in poetry. But after the first chapter, it becomes a little easier to, uh, to absorb and to understand. Well, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you. you. Class. Hare Krishna. Yeah, you, you will be very happy reading Gopal Champu. You'll forget about everything else. <laughs> Maharaj, can I ask you one more question, please? Uh, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Maras, I'm just uh, thinking about the question that I asked and I'm thinking about the discussion that we had for the previous question. So I'm thinking like if spiritual master unlocks the pure devotional service in the heart, how even I'm becoming mechanical, Maras? Hmm. Because pure <laughs> devotional service itself is not mechanical. And during yeah. the initiation process, if Guru Maharaj open, I mean, unlocks the pure devotional service, how he, even are you feel mechanical? He unlocks it and you have to keep it unlocked. Mm. <laughs> you can oh. lock it up again. <laughs> mm. That's possible. He's unlocking it, so he's making it available. 
now you have to now you have to take the opportunity to use it okay. before you can't get to it but now it's available by his mercy mm. but you can misunderstand it you can misuse it you can forget about it you can think it's material or ordinary mm. okay <laughs> thank you Marcus. that's why if you continue to hear you will not fall into this mechanical routine Mm. Hearing has to be regularly. Hearing from the spiritual master, hearing from Krishna. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark. Hey. Hare Krishna. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Um, can I ask you about the um, if there is a disqualification for one reading? Gopal Champu and if Ujwala Nilaman, uh, I think Ujwala Nilaman, if that is in the same category, you know, yeah, is, Ujwala Nilaman is Rupa Goswami's work, but Go, uh, mm, uh, Jiva Goswami did a commentary on it. That's all. Um, so um, that's a little bit. Mm, I wouldn't recommend that for general reading. But so Gopal Champu, well, it's, you're actually going to follow Krishna's leelas as he appears in this world. It's, sim it's similar to the Bhagavatam. In fact, it's almost like the Bhagavatam. The only difference is the chronology, the chrono the chronology is a little different, and the way the presentations is a lot different. Okay. Yeah. So I I think I mean it took me it took me a while to start reading it. I came in contact with the book about five years ago, and I sat down to read it at least four times and never got past the first chapter. <laughs> Each time I gave it up and then read something else. But this to predict this uh, lockdown gave me an opportunity to really focus. So. Okay. So I, it looks like the qualification is to, if you have what it takes to get through the first chapter. <laughs> but this is just my, my observation of the, my experience. And you'll see the first chapter is, is a little bit different than the rest of the book. Uh huh. Okay, Marge. Yeah, I was just wondering if it's considered, you know, some a, a book that's like, you know, if you need a high level of purification to really appreciate. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend anybody reading Utwal and Nilamani or any. Uh, but Gopal Champo, I would say yes. Okay. Gopal Champo, Prabhupada Srimad Bhagavatam, we have uh, written, what is it, uh, Ananda, Ananda, written, Ananda Champo by, uh, uh, what is it, Ananda Rindavan? I think it's Ananda Rindavan. Ananda Rindavan is the book by. Who is that? Puridas, what is his name? Um, that's a nice pastime book. To read and hear Krishna's pastimes is the ticket back to the spiritual world because then we get attracted to Krishna. Yeah. That's, that's the idea, to develop our attraction yeah. to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, Naraj. Thank you. Ananda Rindavan by Kavi Kanapur. That's it. Okay. That's beautiful. But we shouldn't you know, substitute these books for Prabhupada's books. 
I read I read Bhagavatam every day along with reading something else. Okay, so it's getting way past. I think we should end here. So thank you very much, and we'll see you all again next. Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Friday. Yeah. Give you with a word. That take care. Make sure you everybody does what is required to stay healthy. This is a very critical time right now. It's the opportunities to get sick. So uh, be very careful. Keep good hygiene. Get good exercise. Eat a lot of ginger, <laughs> vitamin C, zinc. Add some psyllium in there. Some vitamin D also. <laughs> <laughs> But if you get Shamagori's cooking, then you don't have to worry about all these things because <laughs> all these ingredients are included in her cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Maharaj, <clears throat> can I request you something? Um, if I say no, if I say yes, then I'm a good boy. If I say no, I'm not. <laughs> no, 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 Maharaj. It's um yeah uh, we we uh, we can stop recording mataji yeah thank you so maharaj can you tell a joke one one joke please a joke yes because we are missing your jokes we are having classes but after the class, you used to tell jokes. It's sweet for some time and like that. So. <laughs> All right, I'll tell a Hare Krishna joke. Okay. <laughs> Which one? Um, yeah. So there was one Hindu man, he was walking across the street and he collapsed in the middle of the road and every people gathered around to see if they could help him. And he's barely, barely has consciousness, he's struggling. Finally, the police officer comes and tries to help and the, and the man is, who is suffering, he's saying, uh, get me a Hindu priest, get me a Hindu priest. So the police officer looks in the crowd and says, are there any Hindu priests here? And uh, nobody comes forward. But then finally one Jewish man who's there, he comes forward and he says, I'm not a Hindu priest, but I live right next to a Hare Krishna temple and I know all the prayers. <laughs> mm. So the, uh, the police officer says, okay, well, come on, you'll do. So he comes down gets close to the uh, man on the ground and he recites. He said, this is the main prayer of the Hare Krishnas. I want to thank Mr. Patel for his sponsoring of the Sunday feast. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank Mr. Patel for his kind donation in sponsoring the Sunday feast. The main, the main prayer of the Hare Krishna temple. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. We need to, you know, uh, take the essence, whatever is given class and uh, what is there in the Hare Krishna temple. But the person has taken only the last line, like when we announce, give the announcement of uh, the who has. I'll give. You, I'll tell you one more joke. Okay. Okay. So, so one man is driving along in his car, and he passes by this open field, and he sees a man standing in the field. And then he just continues to go on. 
And, and then the next day, same time, he's passing by the same place. He looks into the field again, and he sees the same man standing there. He's not doing nothing, just standing. So hmm, he just, he's wondering, what's this man doing? So finally, he comes back the next day, drives past, and he sees him again. So he just has to stop and ask him. He walks over to the man. He says, excuse me, I don't want to be impolite, but every day I'm passing and I see you standing in the field, just standing out here. Uh, why are you doing that? So the man says, well, uh, actually I'm trying for a Nobel Prize. He said, really? He said, yes, I heard that in order to get a Nobel Prize, you have to be outstanding in the field. <laughs> 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 okay, that's, that's thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. All right, so much for my jokes. <laughs> thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. For giving a valuable yeah. association. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So we will offer obeisances to Maharaj. So Mancham Kalta Rubishikapa Sindhu Evicha, Fatita Nampa, Shrila Prabhupada Kija, Shrantra Shrimad Bhagavatam Kija, Solinas Chandra Molly Swami Maharaj Kija, Krishna Maharaj, Krishna Maharaj, 